Hey there guys, so it is the long-awaited follow-up to uh, my first Zans Diamond video, which in that video we talked about Zans Diamond in all the different timing and direction combinations, and we also talked about what happens when you uh, take it such that uh, we began with uh, consistency in timing and direction that the hands and the poi are both in the same timing and direction combination, but then we took it into a more polyrhythm kind of place and played around with the idea of what if one hand is in extension the entire time. This video is going to be primarily about what happens if we take uh, Zan's Diamond into a mono rhythm kind of place and keep timing and direction consistent throughout it, but have it be a different timing and direction combination than the one that the hands are in. Also, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, third order caps, which are what happens when you allow segments of Zan's Diamond to switch into a different type of basic pattern for a second. So, to start with, uh, the monorhythm hybrids. Now, almost all of the polyrhythm hybrids we play with in Zan's Diamond are based around this concept of uh, triquetra versus extension. And you notice how when I do triquetra versus extension, there are points at which the poi appear to be moving in split time opposites and points at which they appear to be moving in same time opposites, right? This is totally the same when we're going through uh, the, the, the polyrhythm segments of Zan's Diamond, wherein we decide that we're going to keep one hand in extension the entire time and the other hand in anti-spin all the time. And likewise, we find that it cycles through split opposites and same time opposites kinds of, uh, kinds of sections, right? Now, the question is, what happens if instead of playing around from this place where, here, let me, let me keep this consistent, where we have extension versus triquetra, what if instead we switch it into one pedal inspin versus triquetra? Now, these are both two downbeat patterns, and as you can see, what that results in is they maintain a consistent timing and direction all the way through the pattern, right? Awesome. So what happens then when we apply this to all the different uh, uh, timing and direction combinations we have with the hands is we wind up creating uh, patterns wherein it's clearly a type of hybrid motion because the hands are not both performing the same actions. But what it does is it, while the hands are consistent with timing and direction, the poi are also consistent with timing and direction. They're just consistent in a different timing and direction combination, right? So um, unlike when we were working around with the polyrhythm hybrids, wherein because uh, each polyrhythm hybrid cycles between the same time and split time variant uh, of its particular uh, direction, uh, for each of the hands timing and direction combination, uh, there's only going to be uh, one accompanying poi pattern because it already takes up both of the timings. For these monorhythm hybrids, it, that is not the case. There's going to be two for each of the timing and direction combinations for the hand. Uh, one that will be uh, the opposite direction uh, phase together and one that will be the opposite direction uh, phase split time. So if for example, I'm working around with my hands in split time opposites. I have the option of having my hand, or my poi rather, in split time same direction. Or I can have them in same time same direction, like this. So just like last week, I've gone to the liberty of recording each and every one of these timing and direction combinations, and believe me, some of these are really really hard. So I'm going to cut to those real quick so you can see all of them in action and when we come back we will talk just a little bit about third order caps. So take a look at that.
Awesome. I hope that was helpful. Um, so now we have the question that actually is part of what started me on this video series, which is what happens if instead of contrasting a pattern where one hand is always an anti-spin and one hand is always an either in-spin or extension, what if each hand gets an opportunity to be either an extension or an anti-spin? So for example, instead of having our anti-spin all the way around pattern, what if instead we gave the hand the opportunity to switch to extension in part of the pattern and anti-spin in other parts of the pattern, like so. This came up recently on the Tech Boy group on Facebook and uh, Damien, the same guy who coined the term third order motion, called these third order caps because they, they meet his basic requirements of what a cap is and it's clear that they're operating in kind of a uh, third order kind of fashion. So, of course, the, the really classic example of this is the one that Zan himself performed at the beginning of uh, the Arizona Transmission video a couple years ago with Haley and John, wherein he performs this kind of algorithm. This is actually the first algorithm of Zan's diamond I ever learned. But we could also just as easily kill certain segments of this and say just having it operate inside an hourglass, like so. which actually is a really intriguing possibility to me because once you start taking out certain segments, you can start to decide you're going to take out certain other segments. So if, say, we were to start in this place right here, wherein I'm doing an anti-spin segment and then an extension segment on the other side, I could kill the, uh, the sideways segment and the pattern comes out like this. This should look familiar to longtime viewers of this blog. This is because this is what we've been referring to as the S cap. The S cap we originally just thought of as a pair of like four petal anti-spin flowers that had, uh, well, had the top of one cut off and the bottom of another cut off and they were kind of bridged together like this. But really that segment in between them can be vertical just as easily as it can be diagonal such that it works inside of the same breakdown that Zan's diamond does, in which case we've got access to be able to perform an S cap as a hybrid in and of itself. Pretty cool, huh? So of course realizing this, I'm also realizing now that all the different timing and direction combinations that we have access to with, uh, with all the different Zan's diamond stuff, we also have access to with the S cap. So, in the coming weeks, I'm going to work on those, and hopefully sometime in the near future, I will have a video of all the different timing and direction combinations as performed with an S-cap. So, for right now, thank you guys for watching. Uh, thank you for your patience on me getting this one out. I know it took me a long time. And, uh, yeah, I will be seeing you guys very soon. I'm heading to L.A. this weekend for, uh, for Ignite, and I'm really, really excited to meet some of you guys out there. So, uh, I will see you there. Peace.